Now we're good. Oh, wait, hold on, that's press. Freaking video. Here we go. Can you just check the sound to make sure I'm okay? Because um, I mess with the sounds a little bit. Where Are you okay? This? There we go. That's what I want to see. All right, are we live? Hold on, I just clicked on it. Uh, all right, I see that it's up. Let's see. Yeah, we sound good. All right, cool. I think my dog is sleeping. Yeah, yeah, so a short and sweet one. <laughs> you want to get out of here, huh? <laughs> you said short and sweet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll see what we can get through here. We have. Yeah, we always say that. like short with every single podcast or like, oh, these are the topics and we always go over. So like, well, this, this is just a habit at this no, point. This, no, this actually might be short and sweet because I want to get to some games, man. It's Sunday. Damn. Damn. It's Sunday and I want to start playing some games here. We got to, I got to, just let's get through. Um, I want to hit the gym after this. Good for you, man. I won't be doing that. <laughs> just i ate like a pig yesterday so i feel like i need to do it i mean like a pig all week but um i'm not starting until tomorrow well kind of today but mostly tomorrow i need to ease myself back into working out and everything damn mm. i think that's it all right cool that's gonna be sent out mm. Mm. All right, we're good. We're back. I'm going to put this up. What the hell? Da, 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 da. And then pin this. Pin. All right. But yeah, we sound good. We're good to go? Yeah. All right, cool. Thirsty. Let's get started then. Everyone, welcome to the Dual Shock and Sense podcast. I am your temporary host. Co-host, we're I'm I'm something today. I'm leading I'm I'm leading something today with uh with a good friend of mine here, the good buddy of the podcast, who's finally back from the pits of the dead. Uh, Walt, welcome back to the podcast, to episode one oh eight. Here, what's up? I was in hell. Now I am here. Then I'll go back to hell to lift some weights. Oh, we? I feel you. I feel you, man. Um, yeah, man, what's going on? Uh, it's been a while since we've done this, man. I feel so out of loop on here, but my name's Macho, King of Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy Fanatic. We're bringing you episode 108 of the Dual Shock and Sense podcast. We're going to talk about a couple of things here, including Gamescom. We got a couple other topics on the docket here, like a couple of layouts that have it at Bioware, which is kind of crazy because they laid off 50 people. Well, I don't know if you saw this news, Damn. but, um, yeah. it's pretty stuff there. And then we got Rockstar, and then, of course, we got the PlayStation Portal that was announced than Gamescom. So we're going to get through a couple of these topics uh, as usual on the podcast. We're also going to start with the games that we've been playing, what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks. It has been a while. I still feel out of the loop, man. I mean, we'll just get back into it. So, Walt, tell me, what's going on, man? You've been, what have you been playing? It's actually been like almost a month, I think, since you talked about what you've been playing and what you've been doing. So I want to hear it all. What's going on? Oh, man. Uh, will you believe me if I told you that has been more of a movie and show month than it has been a game month. <laughs> a what because month? Say a game month? And a, a movie month. <laughs> okay, okay. It's been movies and shows. I have. There's not been a whole lot of gaming recently because gotcha. uh, I've been back and forth between buying or not buying BG3. And this weekend, officially, I, I, I'm going to pull the plug after I hit the gym and come home. I'm going to go ahead and probably download that on my steam deck and actually dive into a brand new game that's gonna suck the life out of me pause. yes sir yes no pause um, keep going <laughs> <laughs> um it's just been like uh because i have the regal unlimited you know the subscription i'm just going off on on whenever i can go to the movies i just uh what was it yesterday no today's a sunday right and yeah. uh friday I, I went and watched blue beetle and Oh, how was Listen, it? Man. Listen, man, when I tell you that I can actually say it's a good DC movie, that's a good DC movie right there. Okay. It's, uh, I, I would say I would rewatch it, honestly. It uh, has a lot of heart. It's got those the Hispanic culture in it, a lot of nice music played throughout. The 
classic banter between Hispanic families is in there. Everyone's great. The guy that plays Jaime, uh, Blue Beetle, he's great. Fantastic addition. Yeah, Yolo. He's a, he's cool. Yeah, oh, dude. And uh, George Lopez, hilarious. Uh, I didn't think, I thought he would be more like a like a gag character, but he was surprisingly like pretty, like, like a pretty pivotal character and, and full of heart. Um, everyone was just great, man. A, a great movie, great messages, great theming. The colors, the 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 cinematography was pretty good. Um, villain is what you expect from a villain from a superhero movie, you know, kind of just like the antithesis of the hero. Um, pretty cut and dry, but serves the purpose. Yeah, so I heard, I heard to, that it follows the beats pretty closely to other superhero movies. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but it, it's a good trope, you know. It does the tropes well. Um, it's a safe movie in a way, right? Mm, okay. But this week, this month, man, I've been a, uh, I've been watching, rewatching The Last of Us because my girl hasn't seen it, so we've been rewatching that. This last week, we actually saw. I told you that we were gonna watch episode three that one week, but we couldn't because something uh, presented itself. But this week, we actually watched it, and when I tell you those waterworks were happening, man, they were happening. <laughs> I bet that episode. <laughs> Yeah, that strawberry hit different. It always does. I can't look at a strawberry differently anymore. I giggle, I giggle a little bit and then I cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, got her. I got her to watch the first episode of The Boys yesterday. Um, oh, she, she be... was ruined for the rest of her life. <laughs> that first episode is harrowing, man. Her first, her, her first question was. Wait, what happened to her? To the girlfriend? I was like, just give it a moment. Yeah. I'm like, is that what is that? I'm like, that's her. She's like, what? I'm Doesn't like, that happen like yep. before the title sequence or before the end of the first episode? Dude, that happens at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah, I'm remembering it. Yeah. That's like that's like when you first meet Huey, and they're just talking, and then suddenly, yeah, you're like, huh? It's <laughs> all <Some laughs> a fucking sonic boom hits and you're like whoa what's going oh <laughs> i can't stop i can't stop it keeps running um yeah man no this 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 month for gaming honestly it's i've been playing more marvel snap i never deleted it like you because you're an addict um yeah true played some clash royale i downloaded more uh uh games to a console that usually are not found on that console but i downloaded them anyway because they're accessible there if yes, you know you can catch my drift yes sir um and uh honestly man not much else i've been getting ready for the next D, &D campaign that me and my my group are going to be starting soon um yeah man it hasn't been a lot of gaming but it's been more preparing for for that D, &D uh campaign plus catching up on some movies and some shows i watched uh talk to me the horror movie oh um, how's that yeah oh dude when i tell you that this movie like it it, it it's tr like it's traumatizing in the way that like like there's imagery in it that is absolutely like intense it is jarring like the the sound design in that movie is probably some of the best in any horror movie that i've ever seen um mm, i chickened out i had a chance to go see it but i chickened out oh bro it was, she and my it was, girl it was said because of the she, gore. she said that she gore. won't watch it again she said that Ooh. once is enough for her oof like, yeah, I mean it's just it's just a gore for it me. It's just a gore for me because I heard that there's some like like two, like like the gore isn't like Evil Dead Rise kind of gore, but right. when it hits, it hits. There, and with the sound design, the impact of the gore scenes, it's even more insane. Yeah, and like you feel it. It's visceral. It's it's raw. It's it's oh, it's yeah, everything yeah, you yeah. want from a good horror movie, and it's it's indie. It's an indie, like it's a an indie level horror movie because it's. I think it's an Australian uh, movie. Uh, all the actors are from Australia, or most, if not all of them, most if not all of them. And uh, this is, I believe, their theatrical debut of the directors. Yeah, because they're they're um, YouTubers before. Yeah, they're the same guys that I believe did the the video with Ronald McDonald, like beating beating people up you remember that video <laughs> no it's it's the one where like yells and like the floor her, the her. yeah <laughs> i think it's that one i'm gonna kick your ass <laughs> like, i think that's the same people i think um timeless 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that video so much. <laughs> um, That's yeah, crazy, man. though. I mean, I heard that movie was great. And I think I just saw that movie made like $50 million off of a, bu- a bunch of like... It on the five... box office. Yeah, it made like a so much money off of a really small budget, so... Hey, baby, you can come yeah, in. Man. No worries. Kind of like indie games, you know? Yeah, a lot like indie games now nowadays, honestly. Um, but yeah, man, it's been a chill a chill month. Uh, how about you, man? What you, you usually got so many rotating, but when you got just a few games, you you go in. How how's it been this past month? Oh wow, um, jeez, man, this might be the longer part of the podcast, honestly, because I got a lot to talk about. <laughs> or this week, this week. <laughs> or yeah, I know this week, right? Um, so I mean, to be, I guess to like kick it off, uh, on my, I I told. Jay, before that, my trip to Puerto Rico can consist of mostly Switch games in the backlog. So, Metroid Prime was one of them. It ended up being that one pretty quickly. Like, I mean, like, mm-hmm. halfway through my trip, I mostly did mostly on the airplane ride at the airport, stuff like that. And um, this was a struggle. <laughs> Metroid Prime was a struggle, man. And not because of the fact that, like, it, it's, so, it's not like a bad game or anything. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's an amazing game. But it has those... Uh, those things about Metroidvania sort of style games that piss me off and and tenfold because what makes like Metroidvania so fun to play for me at least that kind of gameplay rhythm of finding stuff and unlocking things and going back to the room where like you couldn't get some before is the fluid part of it so like stuff like Hollow Knight you have like your dash you get through the areas pretty quickly Resident Evil you have the mansion where it's Everything, it's, everything's pretty small so you can remember where things are more often. Uh, even Guacamelee, right? Where, like, that has, like, a really well-designed map but you can get through it pretty quickly. Metroid Prime, on the other hand, is not that. <laughs> the maps are pretty big and the things that you need to progress are so far down the line or in places that are a little more cryptic that by the time you get them, you forget where you need to go. Or it's Whoa. really far. So, I probably ended up backtracking more than I should have as a first-time player because I didn't look up anything. And the time I did have to look up stuff was, like, right at the very end because as your objective as Sam is here, you have to find the stuff you you unlock to unlock, uh, you know, other areas of the game, right? But you have to find 12 artifacts throughout the entire map. And these things are pretty cryptic (laughs) in order to find them. Some are really easy. Others are like, how would I even know that's behind there? Um, so stuff like that, and you have to do, you have to find all twelve of them throughout all the different regions in the map, which, again, are big and quite annoying to get through. So um, mm-hmm. overall, I, I really liked it. Oh, thank you, babe. <laughs> Sammy just dropped by some chili spice mango for me because she knows I like it. Shasti, nice. I love you, baby. Um, I'm gonna definitely chew on that one later. Uh, whoa, pause. pause. Um, <laughs> pause. Relax. Uh, but yeah, Metro Prime. So Metro Prime, that was good, man. Um, overall, great game. I think it was, like the boss is really fun, and everything. But but would I play it again? No, probably not. Um, from what I saw, people say Metro Prime Two and One are their favorites. So, uh, if I play two and I'm not liking it, I'm probably not going to finish the third one if they bring that over to Switch. But overall, I think Metro Dread was the better game. Hands down. Mm, we like more of those the uh, side scrolling. Metroid. It's it's more of just the the fluidity of the game, to be honest. Yeah. Like I don't know if like Metroid. I think it adapted that that gameplay style or like that kind of genre of games really well into first person shooter, and I was really interested in that. But the slickness of Metroid Dread and how you moved, how fluid everything felt, and the gameplay, and just like the so everything that game encompassed was just like eight like s tier this felt like it was definitely like a blueprint like a work in project so to speak yeah yeah because you do have games nowadays that are uh first person and adapt the fluidity really well um you have games like uh is it ghost runner yeah yeah is that the one we, yeah i know what you're talking about yep the one that jay reviewed for log um yeah there's um neon white which jay has also been playing uh played recently this year 
right which is a first person card like card uh like building kind of thing where you have different cards and you keep moving across the but i think that with it is possible with probably metro and prime 4 maybe that's why they're having such a hard time because they're they want to really nail the fluidity of that game mind you mm-hmm. if they're doing it on the switch there's only so much you can do um Hopefully, by the time Metroid Prime 4 comes out, there's a new Nintendo console. Probably not, because I've given up on Nintendo innovating with consoles. Um, <laughs> Give them time. They're cooking right now. Yeah, let them cook. When they cook, like, they're cooking. Like, it's, it's uh, you know, in uh, Tears of the Kingdom, when you put all that food on the, on the little pot and you hear the little music. Yeah, yep. Yeah, when it's like a good, good meal, you hear the dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That's what it's sounding right now. <laughs> I think that's going to be the case much of Prime 4, so I have a lot of hopes for it. Because right. now they... Even a lot of people. I mean, it's... From what, from what I play Metro Prime, like, it's good enough to pay attention to. But right. am I going to replay it? No, I'd rather play Metro Dread like 100 times over before I replay Metro Prime. But I don't know, maybe I need to go back to it, replay it, and now that I know where things are, it may flow a little better. But even then, I like... That doesn't, you know, get the sour taste out of my mouth of my first play through the game, you know. Absolutely. But other than that, it was good. Absolutely. Um, definitely worth playing, yeah. but I think, you know, if you have, like, if you're going to play it, have a guide handy. You know, just so you're not, like, wasting your time like I did a bunch of times. Uh, I mean, I don't think guides are... A lot of people, like, will talk about, like, guides. Oh, my God, you need a guide for these games. Oh, well... Guys are just the equivalent of like back in the day you would talk with your pals like oh do this or do that and like instead of just like talking with someone about it just have a guy that can help you improve the I think guides can really improve the experience and I mean look at Elden Ring uh, Trier recommended having a journal with you and then oh, yeah. from stuff <laughs> yeah. from stuff incorporated landmarks and like little editing on the map uh, very very low min- bare minimum kind of map things but Hey, that's their first time doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, uh, with uh, Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, it's very minimalist, and you just mark where you're gonna go, and you see the light, and you follow it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, but there's games that are, you, you know, guides will improve it, while some other games guides will just help you find something that otherwise will take you a long time. You know, because sometimes mm-hmm. we're, I'm not as smart as I think I am. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, my God, this was this simple. <laughs> and I yeah. was kicking myself in the face like, oh, my God, what's going on? Um, yeah, no, that's Metroid. I feel like any Metroidvania, just like a guide su- serves really well. I mean, look at Hollow Knight. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but the, the thing that made Hollow Knight really easy to like, navigate through was the fact that. Uh, um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to see if this thing change. Uh, was that you could pin stuff on the map. If I could pin things on the map in Metroid, I would not complain. That's true. That's true. You and know? I think also, I, I won't lie, but the art style kind of, uh, for me, it's more appealing to navigate uh, Hollow Nest than it is to navigate the robotic, like the very sci-fi uh, scenic, scenic like uh, routes in Metroid uh, Dread, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I like guess more appealing to the eye to go through the Hollow Knight game than it is to go through Metroid Dread. Um, maybe that's just a preference of art style, but yeah, I feel you with Metroid Prime. It's first person. There's only so much you can do to make everything look appealing. I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's that's the other thing too. Like the environments, I wasn't really big on Metroid Prime as well. I thought they were like okay, mm. you know, um, yeah, your typical ice area, your lava area, so you know, so and so. But like all of it didn't really. Tr- appeal to me which is probably why it took me a long time to or just a while just to really wrap my head around the environment and kind of remember things because all of it which is not super interesting to look at so but i'll, I'll give exactly. it his flowers um i'll give it his flowers because it was like the first of its time and uh For it, sure. it was innovative at the time and it was you know what i mean so it's, it's it has more it has more nostalgia than people realize when they talk about it mm-hmm. but oh dude so many games have nostalgia but listen there's shows that in games that I purposely don't replay or sh- watch again, because I know that I'm going to tarnish a memory. Because I know that a lot of it has to do with how I was a child. I didn't have as critical of a mind that I have now. And I know that sometimes I, I, it's inevitable for me to be like, damn, this is janky. <laughs> or damn, this is this didn't age well. Or, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Like when people are like, oh my god, they're remaking Last of Us Part 1. Well, alright, alright, Buster. Go ahead and play Part 1. Play Part 2 and then play Part 1 remas remake. You're gonna notice the difference. Mind you, do I justify the price? No, whatever. But like the... You can tell like, oh wow, like 8 years is still a long time for a video game. Depending on the video game you're touching. Try playing Uncharted 1. Good luck. Oh like, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I played it before. Yeah, at least recently. Bro, it's it's kind of rough. Yeah. I played that game after two, three, and four. Oh, why would you do that to yourself? Because I wanted the story. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the story. Was it worth it? it was and, it worth it? <laughs> uh, honestly, I'll, I'll be honest. The the interactions between them and Naughty Dog always had them in them, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they are that guy when it comes to writing. So it was worth it for the story alone. Um. Gameplay not so much, but yeah, man, nice. You've been you've been going ham on Nintendo there. A uh, little bit, yeah. One second, I, I just realized that like the Mortal Kombat trailer had like a ton of gore in it, so I'm taking it. Oh. Out. so I'm taking like them. Talking Metroid. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly, and um, I mean it's on YouTube, so it is what it is. But it's from the official PlayStation site, so I'm just trying to make sure. Right, right. Let me just uh get back up here. Sorry, guys. Again, it's been a while, so forgive me been a while um all right we're back with an anime game what's this project mugen there you go oh yeah the i just saw that uh today the i hadn't seen it it looks it looks pretty cool yeah um so yeah so y'all enjoy that but yeah the second game uh going back to nintendo here uh astral chain so <laughs> start this up platinum yeah, Platinum Games. And I texted you before. I was like, is it worth my time? Right? I had some reservations about it. Reading some opinions online. I was like, all right, let me just try it out. So I got to right. the third chapter. And I stopped. I dropped it. <laughs> wait, why? <laughs> wait, wait, what chapter? I was chapter? waiting for the reaction. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I was I need I was discombobulated. I was like, wait, <laughs> which chapter is that? Wait, what happened? I dropped it after the second chapter. Yeah, it's the I mean, spoiler, it's a chapter where Max is, Max sacrifices himself. Right. Right. What Quote got unquote. you off of it? It was a combat, man. Again, really? Again, the combat and the controls for a platinum game. I just can't vibe with it. It sucks. It's uh, personal opinion, right? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm talking my opinion, my rules. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the controls for this game suck, man. It doesn't feel good to play around with the character. Uh, and it's not because it's 30 FPS, like, I, mind you. It's just because it doesn't feel good for me sending out my Legion and letting him do all the cool, fancy footwork. And I get to do a couple of, like, you know, uh, like, teleport to him kind of thing whatever the case may be you know what are cool stuff you can do in this game it's just it just doesn't it's not satisfying me so interesting all right and and the the story is what it is you know it, it's it's whatever it's very anime it's very anime uh i mean nothing nothing against it but i just don't care that I, much i love my anime stories <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, man. I, I think what what got me this game is is very much the theming the sci-fi setting uh yeah i love it Mm -hmm. I love it. The, the graphics music, themselves, well, the, dude. The graphics are are so pretty. The the characters like they're they're likable enough. The legions look cool. Um, you mentioned the music. Like five... The music is incredible. Dude, the music is phenomenal. Yeah, and, it's and really I think, good. And mind you, I think that by the time that I played this game, there's games that you and I have played after. Like, I think it depends also like the games that we've played, what we're getting used to as we grow up. Because I played this game when it came out. That was what, like, four or five years ago. I think I think this game came out twenty seventeen, yeah, around that time. Yeah, that's like, like that's a long ass time ago. Like, yeah, yeah. I think this game I played it like during it was either before or after Hurricane Maria, so it was like a a very like comforting game kind of thing. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I know that maybe if I play now, it won't it won't hit as well. It probably. Uh, I think but no. I think you have fond memories of it, honestly. Yeah, sure. No, I do, and and I think I did. I think I did everything. I think I did everything in that game. There's a lot I to do in that game. Like, so th there's quite a bit like to do when it comes to like special enemies. There's like these special enemies that they're in the world. And they're like kind of hard to find, but then you find them like really hard to fight. 
Um, I like all that shit. I like upgrading my legions and making them the most the strongest legions. There's a couple. I took some screenshots. There's a couple of moments where it's like, you fight. Uh, oh, you know, spoilers, I guess. There's like this scene where it's like you, the main guy. Uh, you like transform. You like fuse with your legion or some shit happens, and you're going against like the bad guy, and it's like this blink splash page of both of you looking at each other about to head on. And it's like it looks very anime. I don't know it's so cool like really cool like that um yeah it sounds I cool I, yeah it, it's really badass but uh yeah no i know what you mean man i feel you it's just it's just I it just feels really. clunky and it, after after dropping bane at a three surprisingly because i was excited for that game um yeah it's the same reason it was like just playing it felt really clunky handheld and on tv that was just not about mm -hmm. it so like playing i, I was surprised too because i wanted to really like it i love like what you're saying before the graphics the aesthetics the art style the music all that's like top tier and it's like platinum at its best but it's just a gameplay that i just do not like it's tough it's because it's like you have to use like there's the certain uh attacks that require you to go around the enemy with your legion like and use the chain like to your advantage and it's like yeah. a weird mm -hmm. way of playing um, like you have to wrap the chain around the enemies to yeah. find them. Yeah, it was a little. Awkward it's very there. experimental, yeah. but I will say that at, if you were to go keep playing, you will notice that there's a legion that you will gravitate more towards because there's long range legion, close quarters. There's more fast re legion. There's a a big buff one that's all about like, uh, defense, um, and then you keep unlocking more moves and like you can kind of also fight alongside your legion. But yeah, it's very it's a very experimental game, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's, so after the second chapter, and I wanted to give it more time. I was going to give it the third chapter. But then I saw yeah. some people doing like some BS side quests. I was like, no, I'm not about that. <laughs> like, like, so. Bye. Yeah, I was like, whatever, man. So, like, the. So that was like in the middle of like my my trip in Puerto Rico. So I was like, all right, I got at least Metroid Prime out of the backlog, and I'm dropping Astral Train, not to worry about those games anymore. So I decided just to not play, like, start anything up, like a new game. So what I did was I went to the backlog on comic books. And let, me, and let me tell you, brother. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. Tell me. If you have not read Batman the White Knight, you need to. You need what to. What is that? Batman the White Knight is a beautiful changing up the rhythm of a Batman lore kind of story that i just fell in love with like this series and thankfully it's a series now because when i bought these comics it was a little early it was batman the white knight and then the sequel to it which was the curse of the white knight now we're actually in batman beyond the white knight um okay. and then right now i think they're doing generation joker the white knight series so Whoa. so there's there's stuff to actually like bite on and chew here but from the beginning of it I was really interested in the, the the thematic story of it, which was what if Joker stopped being Joker and he actually became a sane politician? Whoa. And this is what it plays around with. So like to set up the story a little bit, it's just kinda like a Ben Affleck's Batman where he's seasoned and veteran, he's a little more off the cuff, he's taking a lot more risks, he's being a lot more uh unforgiving, right? So one day it happens where Joker just ticks all the boxes. And he leads them into this facility where it, there are expired drugs in there. And Joker is leading everybody. You've got Gordon in there, Batman, Batgirl, Nightwing. Everyone's following Joker because of his plan. It's basically just a, a police chase. So mm -hmm. Joker tips the scales. He's, he's playing around with everyone's feelings, especially Batman's right. Batman tips over the edge, takes a bottle of the pills, forces them down Joker's throat. Whoa. And then everybody's getting this cam again and it's on camera, right? The police are getting this on camera. So like, and this being sent, you know, the age of social media, and this being sent out saying Batman, he's way too violent now. He's way over over his limit of what he needs to do. He's putting way too much, uh, you know, malice into his actions. And then Joker, with these drugs, that they actually end up doing instead of killing Joker, it actually mixes with the chemicals in his brain and it switches to Jack Napier or Napier, however you want to say his last name who is actually the sane personality of Joker. What? And 
Now he's coming out for vengeance. He's like, listen, Batman's did this to me. He's destroying property with, like, where are these funds coming from? So, like, he's coming at Batman in all full stop. He's not coming at him in a physical sense. He's coming at him in a mentally and, like, a politician sort of way that really, like, flips a lid on, like, is, do we, does Gotham need a Batman? Because he is your dark knight, but I can be your white knight. I can actually get things done. Oh, so, shit. so it, it so that's like the just this as a setup, and then eventually you get rolling with the ball there. Whether the people of Gotham are accepting Joker as he is, or now that he's like this new changed person, and then Batman really trying to conflict with like my people, like the people of Gotham are choosing my enemy, or will once my enemy over me, and what does he have to overcome with like doing that sort of stuff? Like, is he better for Gotham now that he's? not joker anymore do we really need a batman like it's so it gets really into it and it's awesome man it's it, relationships were established i didn't even think were possible certain romantic relationships were also brought up that i was like dude this is like this is some great stuff and the more i kept reading the more i thought like i need a movie of this <laughs> because the yeah. way the the way the comic panels are laid out it has this really classic like old comic book uh, art style but just draped in like a uh, fresh coat of paint so to speak and yeah. it just looks gorgeous but the way the frames are the line delivery the writing all of it is so cinematic I was like dude I'm getting so hyped I binged that entire comic book it was like 250 pages or something like that in a day it was I needed more I needed more and more and more and more and I got to the Curse more. of the White Knight and that that sequel just hits. Oh man, what they did with that one was just bonkers. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wanted more of Joker or Jack N- Napier versus Batman, but what they brought in the sequel, I was like, oh, this is this is incredible. And it's like, I can't it's wait different. to read the next one, dude. It's like, they're like, I read two types of comic books during Puerto Rico. One right. was. The White Knight, where it's like these are the comic books I love that really have great writing and art direction and panel choosing, like which, like how do you actually present certain things and scenes? And then I read like the regular comic books, like Batman crossover, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> where I'm just like, <laughs> okay, the writing's whatever, it's very cringy. It's the the art's fantastic, like the art was amazing in that comic book, for but, sure. But it was definitely like, uh, okay, this is. This is like regular, degular, teenage comic books, right? But then you get stuff like The White Knight and Batman the Black Mirror, Hush, um, Long Halloween, right? That really pushed the medium forward with fantastic writing and, and panel layout. And it just it just changes everything. So that's, Damn, man. That's my recommendation, man. If it's like... I know it's a gaming podcast. We're talking about comic books. And man, if you have to read at least, if you were to at least one comic book, let it be Batman the Black Mirror, which is one of my favorites of all time, or The White Knight, because there's, the quality has not let up from what I've read so far. So, I'm, yeah, it's really good stuff. Damn, man. <laughs> uh, not, not a lot of, got more comics and movies than we did games. <laughs> yeah, I know it's. <sighs> I, I was like, I don't have I don't have much to talk about in terms of games, but man, when like again, when a comic book hits, it hits. So I've been dying to talk Absolutely, about it. Absolutely, man. Um, Gotta do it. That's me with manga. I've been, I've been yeah. slacking a bit of manga, and and I went to the last chapter of the of the one that I was reading, and I was like, wait, I need to catch up. What is going on right now? Like this is wild. How did we get to this? And man, yeah. it just reignites that 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 luster for just on a weekly basis just keep reading and reading and reading whenever mm-hmm. it updates quickly on it i need to get back on that it's every sunday man yeah and that's what i'm saying that like this batman the white knight just was like it created a certain universe that i loved being a part of loved reading about so i'm excited yeah. that they actually have more and that's why i said we need a tv show we need a movie of this of these comic books because they are that good mm-hmm. where it's just like it's it's gonna be different you know that the fact that kevin conroy's not gonna be batman um, and, yeah. and all that stuff, but like it's like his voice was in my head as I was reading the comic book, but Joker, yeah, and same thing with uh, Mark Hamill too as, as Joker, but 
regardless. He, uh, like, yeah. he continues. Because that man is insane. That's the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Batman the White Knight was like kind of like my highlight for the past week. But um, but you, you talk about a game before that you're going to start up. Mm-hmm. And to cure my Puerto Rico vacation depression right to cure it since i'm back here in the states and i had to go back to work and in, in reality i picked up Baldur's Gate 3 and i started it last night and i love it man uh i i was very hesitant on starting this game just for the fact that it is pretty overwhelming with like all of his systems and you know how deep you have to get into it mm-hmm. but um honestly i i chose my character i and he's a half orc uh paladin Named, nice. named Elisar. So we're getting a lot of inspiration from Lord of the Rings here as like my first character. And Sir. you really start the game, you're really wondering, oh, am I making all the right decisions? And it really doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, there is no good or bad. Like, it's, I mean, there is, but like, essentially, the, you don't really need to worry about that stuff because you just choose, right? So I immediately start the game and I'm like, is this the right thing to do? <laughs> like, should, I, should I be doing this? And then I just did it anyway. I'm like, okay, this actually works out. So it's it's already just full of fun dialogue and and uh, crazy critical decision making that I don't really realize until like ten minutes later. Um, I will say though, the the turn based like battle system it is pretty tough so far. Like it does not hold your hand. I'm playing on normal, so ooh, and um, I already died like uh, once. I think already in like in the first hour of the game yeah yeah I, it was stupid of me because i got me just playing around the systems um i went to a area that was like has like embers at the bottom of it so i was like okay so let me just go then there was like a body next to it. i wanted to loot it so I was like, let me go loot it but it turns out my car was on fire right and then so he's <laughs> so he's getting burned up he lost he loses like half his health and i immediately get thrust into a an encounter and of course, oh. against enemies that are fast and that hit hard, and have a and have a chance of actually doing a fatal hit on you. So, right. what happens? They come over and swipe me, and I die. Um, and then the next the next character I have in my party is not able to survive it, so I had to like restart and do the encounter. But now that I knew that it was there, I use it to my advantage this time. So I actually dip my my sword in there and just start wailing on the enemies and doing a little bit of extra damage on them, so that uh so that I can beat it and I beat it. So. Um, it turns out that you know you can learn from your mistakes in this game and come back stronger. Yeah. <laughs> so, but overall, it's fun. It's my first like CRPG, so to speak. I'm yeah. really enjoying my time with it. I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I uh, are you uh, safe scumming or are you going by the book? Like, no, no, I'm, no. I'm just, whatever happens, happens, so to speak. There you go. You know? That's uh, the true D and D way because D and D you can't go back, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm. I'm intending on going. Like I remember for uh, in D and D, usually the Nat one make the best moments because it's the critical failures just make you have to improvise. Like how do you turn this failure into something funny? You know, and it's like mm-hmm. you will have this dungeon. Uh, Matt Mercer once explained like, okay, let's say you're. You're, this is one of the examples of like how D and D can go like any which way, which is it's hard to replicate in a game. But BG three really got super close. But let's say you want to succeed in something, right? And you're telling the the dungeon master, "I really want to look through this uh through this hatchet. You, it's it's locked. It's you're not gonna be able to. There's nothing there. There's nothing on the other side. Uh, you have to keep going. And it's like no, but like I want to I want to look through it. I want to do an investigation. It's like all right, roll for investigation. And doesn't that twin? It's like all right, you look up through the through the hatchet as much, and mind you, he's been trying to let them know, hey, you need to keep moving forward. You want to check the okay, check the hatchet. You succeed in checking the hatchet, perfect. When you look up, you notice that there is a battalion of guards looking down at you, and it's like <laughs> you succeeded, but you kind of failed at the same time. So how do you like <laughs> pivot from this, like? Bro, it is so... I'm so excited for this game. I, I've seen the clip millions of times of someone, like, the squirrel. Yeah, I saw that to too. The squirrel, <laughs> and the squirrel bites them and kick them. And everyone's like, whoa, I succeeded. Yeah. Oh, shit. That yeah. squirrel is dead. Yeah, you know, you kick the shit out of that squirrel and it just dies. <laughs> yeah. 
And then you hear the narrator, you wonder yourself, why did you even engage the squirrel in the first place? Like, I love it. It's so, like, it, it embodies d and I, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. To, that to randomness, I had no idea about. Honestly. Oh, yeah. Which was Damn. like, which makes it so much more fun, because yes. there are, there are things like that, right? Where, um, so pure example, it's not spoilery. Where I went to a camp, right, and then I helped these guys take out uh, a group of uh, orcs that were rampaging them, and they start having uh, an argument, and all of a sudden the dice starts rolling whether you can intervene in the potential fist fight these guys are about to get into, and I feel that roll, so. It, it was a high roll. I was like, oh, there's no way I'm reaching that, right? That's like totally, that's like out of my league and it's just pure luck. Obviously, I feel it. But then the next thing you know, these guys start getting into the fist fight. I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, maybe if I, you know, if I actually <laughs> rolled the proper number, I could have intervened. But like, what I really wanted to, it's like, that kind of randomness is a lot of fun. And I'm glad you I mentioned the, the dungeon master, like the narrator, because um, her voice is just incredible. She, nice. I saw someone, um, equate her voice to Galadriel from Lord of the Rings and Ooh. I haven't kept that in my mind I'm like yeah Galadriel's like guiding me on this quest I'm getting really fucking nerdy here but like I yeah. just love <laughs> I just love the fact that it's like a woman with her voice is like so powerful and and uh mischievous and mysterious dude like it's like it's so cool just to have her like narrate like my adventure as a half orc here so it's really cool man I'm really digging it Fuck yeah um, so yeah, I'm excited to play more. I was gonna play right before our podcast, but then like it was like a half hour, and I was like, "There's no way I'm gonna get anything done in half hour." So uh, mm. I, I can't wait to play more of it. So I'm playing that and Red Dead Redemption Two back to back. Um, yes, sir. And uh, again, what else to say about Red Dead Redemption Two, man? You already know it's a masterpiece. Playing it on PC is even more of that, and uh, it's, it's just a beautiful, incredible. It was that PS Five upgrade, but we need. You were, yeah, honestly, dude, because Red Dead Redemption Two is is just playing it on PC, night and day experience compared to console. Night and day, night and day, it's it's incredible. Just the stories there, like just yeah. Red Dead Redemption Two, it's just a world. masterpiece, man. It's a masterpiece. And no, and no open world like that. Truly, truly, uh, no other game like Baldur's Gate Three. So I can't wait for you to hear more about it from you when you play it. Um, yes, sir. And by the time we do the next podcast too, which would be like uh not this weekend coming up but next weekend we'll have more to discuss about Baldur's Gate 3 because I know Soul's gonna be playing it you're gonna get more into it I'm definitely playing it so so uh yeah we'll talk Absolutely. more about it then but other than that yeah so that's uh stuff we've been playing and <laughs> and, and talking and comic books and movies thanks for joining the podcast y'all so, yeah thanks for joining the podcast uh no we'll, we'll get through a couple of these topics here then we'll get then we'll get yeah, out of yeah. here but, uh, so what have you been hearing about Gamescom, man? Have you been keeping up with it, or what's been the MO? Man, in I've been uh, I've been pretty off uh, off social. I just been keeping like the with the big ones, like the the whenever something's trending or whenever something's like really stands out. Um, those are the things I kind of keep my eye on because uh, I'm not really. It's like Twitter, like you said, you know, you kind of like got off or I I've been like. And I barely even go on Twitter at this point. Like, I barely go on any socials. The most I do yeah. is, like, I'll just go, like, do my games, maybe scroll through Instagram a little bit just to look at some memes and, like, or TikTok. Uh, TikTok's been my, my latest, like, not obsession, but, like, the one I do frequent the most. Um, but, you know, I've been hearing more, like, what you guys, like, on the on the Discord, like, uh, the articles y'all have been sending or, like, the things you talk about, and then I look them up, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that, that is happening. Um the things I've been keeping up more haven't been so much with uh, Gamescom, but there's things that I don't know if they were featured on Gamescom that I am interested and in, have been looking like the Sea of Stars, like the they announced uh, a new character that I didn't know. There, there's like a fourth character that's going to be featured in the game. Yeah. Aside from the three main ones, it looks really cool. Um, I've been uh, just looking at the uh, Steam Deck, just like indies that are being worked on. Um, not not a whole lot with Gamescom itself, Gamescom itself, because I don't really know right now which, what what was announced or what has been like the highlight of of Gamescom. Like I know about the Starfield, uh, like the New Game Plus. Like I know about the Starfield, um, 
the not being able like the the world doesn't open up until you finish the main mission or whatever um like little things like that but like persona 5 tactica uh the yeah. persona 3 Re reload collector's edition that you sent me and i kind of just had a heart attack there yeah um, flame sent me that one i was like oh i gotta i gotta show this one to walt that's wild bro wild but yeah what what have been like the highlights what what what's been the things that st stood out for you the most um well i mean i didn't watch the the whole uh what's it called ONL, it's like Gamescom, like uh, something Night Live or whatever. Basically, like the right. entire show that they have, like apparently it's like over two hours. Like I'm not doing that while I'm vacation. Damn. Um, not I, I don't care that much really, but <laughs> the the things that that kind of really said to me was mostly Tekken Eight. They had like a mm -hmm. they had a what was it? A, um, they had a trailer basically confirming that they were having 32 characters at launch, along with like the different editions that's come out of the game, and then the release date. So it's coming out, I think, January 28th or 26th of 2024, which I'm looking forward to because that game just looks bonkers, man. It looks so damn good. And speaking of fighting games, right, Mortal Kombat 1 yeah. had their story trailer or their um, Sindel or Sindel, however you say her name, and, uh, and Shao Kahn trailer, which was just brutal, man. I saw that, that I think her name is Sindel. I saw that trailer for Sindel, man. Which is it's a girl with like the gray hair and she's using her hair. Yeah, as the attack. silverish. Yeah. yeah, I saw that dude. Her fatality is nuts, dude. It she takes her hair, wraps it around the character's arms in the trailer, right? Breaks them so that the bone's exposed, and then she rips them off. Um, and then she does something else afterwards. But either way, before she like actually kills them, she's like bow to your queen. I'm like, oh, I'm playing as you. Like, I'm looking at it right now. It's brutal. Uh, <laughs> it's brutal. She has an x-ray attack where she takes the person, bashes them on their head, splits their legs. And I was like, hey, oh yo! Oh my god, I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. Brother. Nuts. I saw her. do the fatality now? Finish him. Yes. All right, what are you doing, Sindel? Okay, grabs the hair. Yeah, oh uh, my god. Yeah. Yep. Pulls yeah. him apart. She still has them. Puts puts the hairs inside of him. <laughs> grabs his neck. Pulls out the skull and the sweat. So predator, yeah. Oh my god, bro, relax. It's I know it's he's okay. He's okay though. He's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's alive. He'll he'll reset. Yeah, think thankfully thankfully he's he'll be okay. But <laughs> yeah. I saw that and I was like, yo, I'm playing as her. Wood. I'm playing as her. She's so cool. <laughs> Damn, some freaks out there, I bet. Too. Her, her, and Reptile, gonna be playing as them for sure. More kind of one looks great. Uh, yeah, Tekken Eight was like another standout one I said before. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean that's it's kind of like the ones I'll pay attention to mostly. I mean, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty continues to deliver. It looks incredible. Did you see the uh, the the trailer with all the new overalls and the updates? Revamping. Yeah, mm -hmm. do you see it all? I did. I saw. I saw like clips of of the highlights of it. I didn't see the the trailer itself because it was on Twitter or no, it was on TikTok that I was seeing it. Um, but it, it just like the way that they just start out with you jumping off. Of, I'm like, whoa, you can jump off vehicles! <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah. like just small stuff that like you would think like it's in, in a world with like augmentations and all these things, but like uh, yeah. Just and not even just like you as a as a player, but you also have the the actual like law enforcement that's changing. Yep. Um, like aesthetically, the way that you kind of interact with weapons, like the way they look, the way that the the augmentations look, the little idle animations, um, everything. Just, it's just yeah, they're upgrading it's, the it's skills. They're adding new ones. Um, they're adding more life to the world, which is really cool too. So. So I like it looks it. it looks like a true cyberpunk uh, experience if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you guys, and I, at least when if Soul was here, I would ask if he, he was gonna replay it because of all these new additions stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Are you gonna end up replaying it? This is the thing, man. I might say now, like, man, I don't know if I'll hold the time. Then it comes out. Then boom, I'm day one right there. <laughs> yeah, that thing comes out uh, another month. Honestly, the expansion, and that's gonna be the last expansion for Cyberpunk until the sequel. So, 
I'm excited, man. I'm excited to to see if like we get some uh like uh, refinement of certain levels or like maybe they they put in some new things they didn't talk about. I'm I'm excited to see what they do change that they don't really talk about a lot that they do improve on. So um, people to like people starting to discover things around the world. Uh yeah. Like little easter eggs here and there. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking just replaying what I did because I know I talked about before on the podcast where I dropped it because the beginning hours weren't like really pulling me. But you guys said that it was, <clears throat> it gets better and everything. So I'm definitely going to wait for this and probably restart and just barrel through the beginning hours with like the, with the detective thing that you're doing in the beginning with like, you know, figuring out the clues for the different crime scenes and stuff like that. Yeah. I forgot what it was called, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll just blast uh, through that. Uh, oh my god, uh, that's like a big selling point of the game when they first marketed it. Um, yeah, yeah, I forgot what it's called. Ah, <laughs> Cy- I need to look at Cyberpunk. Uh, brain, brain dance. Yeah, brain dance. That's yeah. Okay. Brain dance. That, like, What's yeah. the weird name? That was that was the the one thing that they marketed was the one thing I was just like not about when I was playing it. I'm like, this is kind of boring. I just want to get back to the world. So I'll replay it and then um or just blast through that and I'll start playing it properly, you know, sometime soon. Um, yeah. Uh, sometimes yeah. you'll you'll you will have some moments where you do need to do a brain dance to kind of unlock, but they, they make it interesting enough. To where it doesn't feel like a slog um I, that first one just is so generic and so like yeah i don't know it, it's it kind of drags but there's some brain dances in that game that are there are optional that oh my god they will mess you up <laughs> <laughs> now i look forward to that when i, when I kick it back up um did you just did you just see black myth wukong you got another presentation bro that game I, I, each time, like each new trailer or each new thing they show, like it looks good, it looks better, it looks good, but like, it's like it's like Elder Ring. It's like, does this exist? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, this, but uh, apparently, is exist? apparently is going to next year. Is targeting summer of next year, the earliest. All right. So we'll see All if right, it actually well. hits it. But every time we do get a look at it, it looks really good. And from what reports are saying, the game feels as good as it looks, and. It has some. It has like a mix of the Neo and Soulsborne, where obviously it's mm-hmm. clear, like in the camera direction, and then the you know sort of the boss design and everything like that is very much Souls like. But you have different stances with your staff as the main character, um, so that's where you have the Neo aspect coming in. So it's it's looking good, man. From the trailer they showed off, it looks bomb. Like it's still it's like a game that you want to play, you know? Yeah, yeah. It looks fresh. Like it looks like. Like an idea that hasn't been done that well, you know what I mean? Like that myth, and that like uh like culturally heavy game. That yeah, sense. yeah. I was I was talking to Soul about it in our last podcast. Of like, uh, because we're talking about games that that were sitting like at the '90s and Metacritic's and games that like really hit the zeitgeist, right? Like for this generation, has been like Elden Ring, Zelda, now Baldur's Gate three, and how those three are kind of influence other games for years to come, right? Kind of like how Witcher mm-hmm. did the same thing. Um, we were, uh, what was it? We're we're talking about Elden Ring, how that's going to influence everything. But uh, I, I mentioned how, like, whenever there's like a Souls like game that comes out, like Lords of the Fallen or Lies of P or whatever, I really don't care. Usually, you know, I, I just, mm-hmm. just give me like the From Software stuff. That's like that's all I care about. But for Black Myth, that's essentially has the same traits and similarities. I'm like, I'm all in. And that's really because of the art direction and just the way the mm-hmm. game looks and feels. Like, I don't know, are you getting that same kind of vibe here where, like, this, like you said before, it feels fresh? I think that's a perfect way to describe it. It gives me the vibe of you would always see these trailers for these games that look like this, but they would never really happen. They would never come to fruition, or they were um, purely trailers. This looks like a trailer made into a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you know, it's like the the slice. The, what's it called? The uh, the use of that's like a I forgot vertical slice. That's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Like you look at the 
Ubisoft trailers, and then you look at the games, and it's like two completely different companies are making these things. <laughs> yeah, you know? so yeah, the 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 cinematic camera shots of like the assassins kills versus actually doing it in the game, you'll see just and then <laughs> that's it. <laughs> or you look at the Rainbow Six Siege when it first came out, and you look at the trailer, and it's like, whoa, like this game looks like like a true SWAT you know SWAT type like game where you you infiltrate and you breach and then you look at the game and it's clunk clunk clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> okay go in clunk 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 run here slash here clunk clunk and then you look at the game the trailer and it's like yeah the helicopter's dropping those yeah, go through the go through the roof the, the civilians in there let me use my camera to look inside and it's like bro you don't got to do all that like just just make it fun like don't, don't you got to make a whole Michael Bay ass movie yeah, yep. very few games actually like deliver on what the trailer represents. I'll say like Sifu yeah. does that. Uh, yeah. Monster Hunter games do that. Uh, uh, Last of Us Part Two absolutely did it. Psych. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Final Fantasy Sixteen was one of those as well. Where like. Do you remember that, yeah. Macho? What? Do you remember when they when they teased in the Part Two trailer someone like holding Ellie? from the back and then her being like what are you doing here and it's joel yeah i do and that's that's when i was on board with the game i was like oh yeah okay cool <laughs> and then you were like jesse ew <laughs> yeah what's jesse doing here it's supposed to be joel <laughs> oh no joel's out playing golf never mind <laughs> i i remember that and i was like all right we're getting this kind of story i'm down for it all right, game of the year right here, baby. And then <laughs> the leaks happen. And oh, and then, God. oh, you know um, what? What yeah. games do that? Uh, the trailer versus gameplay. Uh, Nintendo games. Yeah, yeah. True. Nintendo games. The trailers, whatever story things. It's like, yeah, no, this is a cinematic. But then the game looks just as good. It never looks like it's lacking. Uh, well, that's that's where we have um, Zelda, Tears of the God Kingdom, man. That game. Amen. That game. Uh, Tears of the goatness. Tears of the goat. Go, goat them. Absolutely. It's gonna be a tough competition for game of the year. But um. Oh yeah. yeah um. Uh, last thing I want to mention. Uh, Alan Wake Two. Did you see the trailer for this one, dude? Bro. Horror. <laughs> you see? So you saw it? It's it's isn't it fantastic? Horror, yeah. It's so good. The trailer is magnificent. The way like it just blends actual in-game cinematics from the live action stuff a couple of times i was like all right so am i looking at the game or i'm looking at live action like i was confused sometimes just watching the trailer because it did such a good job of blending the two where i was like oh i feel like i'm back in the early 2000s where um where uh you they will blend the two so to speak or you will watch a trailer for a game and it'll be all live action like oh that's not gonna be the, really the game but i'm watching alan wake 2 trailer i'm like this actually might, you know, be the game, <laughs> but it looks so lifelike. I can't tell. Do you think the person that complimented Tetris as like, man, games cannot get more insane than this? Imagine them now. Yeah, Alan like, Wake Two is just—it looks so good. And, and and Alan Wake is is a franchise that has always been there, like in the back for me, but I've never acknowledged it. I've always been like, yeah, no, that's a game, but I've never like really paid attention. Then now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, perfect timing. Just, it just popped up on our podcast uh, trailers here, so people know what I'm talking about. Or sure. like, it jumps between game, how in-game visuals are, and then live action, and then sometimes you just can't tell like what you're looking at. It, it's so mesmerizing. It looks so good. I have no idea what's going on, but like, oh, I'm down for this trip, man. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Ski. So yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna play it day one, but. It's, it will yeah, be played. Yeah, no, I don't. It will be played. I, I don't think um, there are games like I learned my lesson. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I liked it. I said it was like, oh my god, that's like the game of like a gaming ass game. But then I play, it, I'm like, yeah, this is good, but it's like not. It, it doesn't hit the way that I I thought it was gonna hit. Um, it's still good, but I'm noticing that I've accepted that I can't just play any game at any point in my life. If that makes sense. I can't go look at my backlog and be like, man, this one's the next in line. No, 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 no. I have to pick one that I'm actually feeling in the moment. I've accepted that. That's why now BG3, I'm like, no, I'm in the mindset for that game. Or and for Switch, I'm in the mindset for Omori. 
which yeah. is a, a JRPG, you know, a small indie game. I'm in the mindset for that. I'm in the mindset for uh, what you call it, Sea of Stars. I'm in the mindset for like specific, specific games. I can't go and play Tears of the Kingdom now. Maybe I'll play next week again, you know, or maybe I'll play in two weeks or maybe tomorrow. Like, I don't know when I'm going to feel a game and I'm just going by feel because for the longest time, like, and you know this, Forbidden West, I tried to play that game for a while and I was like, but then I, there was this point where I was like, wait a minute, this is hitting. And then I kept going, I kept going, I kept going. And oh my God, I can't Forbidden West. This is like one of the best games I've ever played. Same with Tales of Arise, remember? Oh, like yeah. I played that game a year after it came out and I... I was like, Macho, there's a second, there's a second opening. <laughs> ah. I know you're just busting nut over there, <laughs> bro. I busted so much. Pause. No pause. <laughs> Commit. <laughs> I was, oh man, no. It's one of the best. It's one of the best games that people don't want to talk about now because they just want to complain all the it, time. It, it, it truly is one of the best JRPGs out there. Um, I would say action RPGs for sure. JRPG, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, man. It's uh, I'm excited for these games. I- I'm excited for uh, for Alan Wake as well. I, like horror games are back in a way. I feel like they're we're, we're doing pretty good. I saw this this gameplay for a game. It takes place in in Bangkok, and it's like you're in an apartment building, and it's like super environment heavy. The ambiance is insane. Um, nice. It, it bro, I'm excited. Alan Wake, you doing good, bud. The other, yeah. the last trailer before this one, which we got at another conference, wasn't hitting, but this time it, it they they hit it, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on like the whole playing what you feel, so to speak. This is why, like, as soon as I got back from Puerto Rico, I was like, I need to cure this post vacation depression, so let me get immersed in another world. And that was Baldur's Gate. Um, that and yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two just fill me up, man. Fill me up with all the gaming goodness. And then we got, hey, yo. and then we got the next topic here, which is gonna be short and sweet. It's the tenth uh, anniversary of Final Fantasy XIV. So as the Final Fantasy XIV ambassador here, uh, I, of sure. course I had to give it the highlight here, which is another game that uh, I've been, that I just started today, or started again. It's been um, like nine months, probably longer, probably I think ten months since I actually played it. So it's been a hot minute, man. Um, but Damn. I'm here for the 10th anniversary. We're getting that started. And I just want to say this game is amazing. Everyone should play it. There's a free What's trial. Right now. There's a free trial right now. Final Fantasy 14 with up to level. Go. I think, actually, no, a seventh. It's, it's right now, it's, it's not updated. But once the new expansion drops next year, they're going to upgrade that free trial to level 70. You get to play all the way up to Stormblood, which is essentially three JRPGs. And uh, it's it's all amazing stuff, so go and do that. But overall, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to Final Fantasy fourteen tenth year anniversary. This th- this game came back from the dead. It was essentially gone yeah. and done. Like th- this game was, this game was like no hope for Square Enix at the time when it dropped. And then Yoshi P, the god himself, along with his amazing team at Business Division three, recreated it they, as as a phoenix would, birth from the ashes of the fire. Let him cook now. Let him cook. And they are cooking. Cook. They're cooking with adobo and just a lot more seasoning than anyone's prepared with. But guess what? They're Lots doing it. Lots of phoenix it. feathers. Lots of phoenix feathers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All those phoenix downs. You know, after a while, it, it hit me. I was like, phoenix down? Why the fuck is it called phoenix down? Because phoenix. I get yeah. it. It revives you. There you go. Use that brain a little yeah. bit. Just use, use at least one, like of those, use one of those brain cells you got. Why is breakfast called breakfast? Because you break your fast in the morning. Exactly. I didn't know that until... Go. <laughs> there you go. Using that one brain sound. I'm proud of you, Walt. Yeah, man. Proud it's of like, you. Uh, it's like SpongeBob when he, there's like the archive. It's like burning down in his brain. They're like, ah, oh, Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. Shout out to Final Fantasy 14, man. This game changed. Uh, it Your definitely it, it changed my life for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially since I, I started playing it around May 2019. Child bringers expansion didn't come out till July, so that was, I was playing mostly through Rama Born. I created my character, my main character now, Stella Tenebris. Um, the same, I know it's June 28th, I think it is June 20th, July 28th. I created her the same day because I have the early access on that one, 
And then ever since then, it's been a rap, man. It's just like the, the journey you go through that game is absolutely life-changing. Just from starting a Rumble Born and then playing through the entire story as your own dedicated Final Fantasy character, like, what a magnificent journey that is. Like, I can't wait to replay it as Stella when the, when the new graphics drop for 7.0. And just all the new people are going to be playing, especially now that it's coming to Xbox. Like, finally, it's coming to Xbox. Now a whole bunch of people get to actually play it um, and experience that same thing that I went through. And it's always fun to see other people go through that. It was funny, actually. Well, when I logged in today for the first time in months, right, I actually ran into uh, one of the streamers I watch that plays a game. Her name's Tiffany Lockhart uh, in the game and, okay. in, uh, and on, on Twitch. And she started playing the game, like, about, like, a year ago or so. And so, like, I've been watching her journey, her reactions, going through the entire game. So it's really cool to see, like, other people's journeys and stuff like that as they play through the game and... I love it, man. It's it's one of the best games ever made, and hopefully we have another 10 years on the pipeline, which I'm sure we do. But um, regardless, uh, all I'm going to say to end off my little speech here is that uh, you need to get your ass back in the game, buddy. <laughs> yes, you. I need, to get a, I need to get an account that can do the free thing. <laughs> yeah, you actually do. <laughs> you actually do. Uh, so restart that up. And then uh, we'll get you situated, all right? So see, Yeah, I'll see if I can call Square uh, headquarters. Because you know, um, now we have a list of games that we have to play through. We finished Strangers of Paradise, right? Yeah. We eventually yeah. have to get back to Diablo 4 because we both haven't finished it and haven't put a lot of time nope. into it. Uh, and then we have to do Final Fantasy fourteen. So... Yeah, you basically up. want me to not have a life. I'm kidding. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but finally 14 we had to do this man especially since flame now that it's coming to xbox and his peasant ass can actually finally play it so we we can actually get through this amazing story together and i want to be there when you guys experience all the crazy ups and downs of fun. the story like that's like, like a lot of fun like I, i'm 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 dead serious <laughs> you you guys will be foaming at the mouth of the kind of stuff that this, that happens in this game, especially post Rama Born. The Jesus. the stuff that you go through with characters, you'll be crying. <laughs> Just stop that serious. <laughs> you'll be crying one way or the, one way or another. You. you you will be in tears, and I'll be there for it. I, I do believe you. Perfect. I think I think FF14 reached um what where I categorize Fortnite to be. And it's it stops being a game and it starts being a global event. It just starts being an experience. Like, it just becomes like a culturally significant space, if that makes sense. Because, like, one of the biggest hits in manga literature history was Kentaro Miura's death. And where the people come to mourn, they went to FF14, they honor him. You know? When... You have big concerts and like events being celebrated. You people go to Fortnite and and there'll be big events. Like there's there's games that transcend be, just being a video game. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, for sure. I think FF14 is already up there with uh, like WoW. WoW at this point, I don't even. When people talk about WoW, I'm like, that's not a game. That is a life. That is your second life. Just like FF14 is. Like Destiny. I don't treat Destiny like a game. Destiny is basically just like your second home people go there and they're like no yeah i gotta i gotta i gotta grind for this one weapon it's like all right bro yeah, yeah. there's not a game you're just like it's your due diligence you have to grind if not you're not you you know what i mean yeah which is why like i think Final Fourteen works so well because of the fact that it is that home you can always go back to you know it's like it's like that home that you in a it's like that vacation home that you paid off already you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. It's there. Maybe you need to maybe you need to get a get a caretaker every now and then to go look at it, make sure it's okay. But you don't really need to. And then when you're ready to go back to that vacation home, after working so digitally, digitally, I can't even say the word right. After working so dig, I can't even say it. After Digi working so yeah, there you go. Cannot say it. <laughs> after working so hard for so long, you just want a good respite. Go back to fourteen, bro. Speaking of 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 diligency and and games that are consistent and improving upon themselves, 
I cannot tell you how impressed I am every time I see a goddamn update on No Man's Sky and I just see the list. And I see yeah, the list of one. things that they keep incorporating. It's called Echoes this time. Got a new race. Got, got new trading. Got new freights. New freight fighting. And like pirates. And like they're so... Bro, this game... Wow. Someone call it the true Starfield. Oh. Oops. Oh, did I say that loud? My bad. Listen, listen. I won't I won't <laughs> lie. People be out there are gonna be like starf and whatnot. I'm gonna take a screenshot and just see if people like can tell. <laughs> like, I'm playing Starfield right now, boy B, I'm already Oh no, don't do that. They'll they'll come after you. They'll come after you. Uh let them come. Whoa. Let them come. I'm ready for their come I'm I mean I'm ready for Whoa. for them. Whoa, buddy. Right. Okay. Um <laughs> So, shout out to Final Fantasy XIV, man. Turning 10 years old. Here's to 10 more. Amen. Uh, I can't wait to go back to it. And then, uh, yeah. I mean, I go through it now. For people that are, that are Final Fantasy XIV players, uh, you already know. But for people that have been out of the loop like I have been for a long time, uh, right now they're doing a 10th, 10th anniversary event called The Rising, which they've done every year. It's more of like a annual commemoration of the game itself. Uh, but for this particular uh event here they're actually giving you a mount and it looks really oh. dope that never happens i mean you you can get a mount in certain events but like they never done one for right. the rising far as i know so and this one looks really dope so if you haven't been there in a while just you know just log in you get a free 14 day trial like i just did right now um in case you, you know you're tight on money or something like that just log in you get 14 day 14 free days right now and you can end up you know, getting doing those quests and then getting them out. So, um, yeah, get them out. Do what Macho does on a daily with the Square Enix. <laughs> Good one. Um, Just mount it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Okay, so let's uh, jump over to uh, I guess one of the bigger topics here is the PlayStation Portal. Um, I told you to read up on this. Did you actually read up on the blog? I did. Okay. Can you talk about it? Because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Macho, there's nothing new here. Like no, I'm just that kidding. I <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I was like, I was like, I read the article. And I'm like, yeah, no, this is. I just know the price now. <laughs> <laughs> That's case, all I know now. I knew everything else. <laughs> case in point, right? PlayStation and Porto was this rumored uh, remote play handheld device that was initially Project Q, I think it was before. Um, now, PlayStation finally revealed it alongside the new Pulse Elite uh, headset and the Pulse. What was it called? Um, I forgot. It's a new. Uh, it's a new Elite? wireless earbuds. Yeah, the Pulse Elite. No, the Pulse Explore. That's what it was. They have a new Pulse Elite wireless headset and a Pulse Explore wireless earbuds, which again was rumored before. But the big thing, the big, the bigger topic that people are taking away from all this is the fact that PlayStation is releasing the. Handheld device as a remote play device, mostly tied to just your. It's just mostly an accessory to the PlayStation Five, and it's literally a Dual Shock pierced apart in half with an eight-inch LCD screen slapped in the middle of it. Ray, run that by me again. And and uh, what? An eight-inch what? An eight-inch LCD screen. Yeah, I know you heard right. It's my case. Yeah. LCD. <laughs> yes. so those are the. I was reading and then I stumbled LCD and then I went to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But the entire gimmick here is that you're getting the the dual sense controls and the, the gimmicks of it, right? So the haptic feedbacks, the adaptive triggers, all the stuff you experience on the dual sense controller, you're getting on this handheld device, which is more or less a setting selling point. You got a 1080p screen. You can play a game at 60 FPS, but does that really matter when it's a remote play and you're playing over Wi-Fi? I don't know. We'll find out. Macho, this is this is an incredibly situational uh, device. Yes. Yeah. This is too situational. I think like, the I think the name is like fantastic, right? Like it's not, and it's a little bit of a play on PSP as well, right? What, the backbone, the name backbone. No, 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 no. The PlayStation Portal. It's a, it's a play on the PSP, right? Because you, you literally have the acronyms PSP here, which I thought right, was really portable. clever. Well, port, yeah. But for this one, PlayStation Portal, 
Yeah. It, it's I think the name is correct, right? Because essentially, yeah. it's, it's an accessory. You're, it's your portal into a PlayStation Five, which is what this thing really is. Correct. But con- yeah. continue it's, what you're uh, saying. It's half of a Wii U. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, where Nintendo learned from their mistakes, uh, PlayStation is still loading, like an Internet Explorer. And they're like, <laughs> wait, let's just do the pad then. Yeah, I mean, so the thing about this, like, it seems absolutely... Like, when I first started reading this, it, it feel like it was an absolutely useless device, and I still s- sort of feel like that. Um, yeah. Not even taking into account that you, it's not, it doesn't have Bluetooth in it. So, it's even... And, and those wires, baby. Yeah, and then they, they so they introduced this thing called PlayStation Link, where you can set up uh, different PlayStation accessories to connect to this device if you want to. So, of course, the main thing that you can connect it to that's going to be prime and ready on day one, right, is the wireless earbuds that cost two hundred dollars. Of course. That's so deal, man, four hundred dollars for for what could have been just just buy the Steam Deck, guys. Yeah, essentially. So, of course, at this thing that doesn't have Bluetooth that can only really connect to PlayStation eccentric items, uh, is going to be released later this year at two hundred dollars. The one, so what doesn't make it completely useless, Walt, is the fact that you can use it outside of your home, mm-hmm. which is PlayStation that, that would deem it that 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 would imply that it's a, a portable device. Right. But this is an accessory. And that's right. the thing. That's the key word. It's an accessory to your PS5. It is not a console. When something is an accessory, it can only work with the main daddy. In this case, the daddy's PS5. Uh, it's same like the pad for the Wii U. You cannot use the pad without the Wii U. You can only use it with the Wii U. Right. I think, you know, I, I may not be a, uh, an expert in, in PlayStation uh, studies, but uh, they could have just waited and refined, if they're not doing it already, a hand, actual handheld. When because if they look back to their PSP days, that was like some of the like golden age for PlayStation fans, and a lot of people reminisce about those days I because do. of how absolutely convenient it was. And then the PS Vita came around, and then they had little support. The PS Vita is the Wii U of PlayStation. It had little support. It had an OLED screen, by the way. Way ahead of its time. So good. It, it had an OLED before the Switch had an OLED. It had to, it had a, a few things that were kind of weird. Like the touch screen, touch in the back. That was weird. Oh, it was trash. It was a gimmick. It was trash. Yeah. It, it, everything has a gimmick. Everything has its one thing that's questionable. Um, you know, PS5, I'd say one of the worst things that they could have done is remove themes. That is one of the worst decisions that PlayStation has ever made to their consoles is remove customization of interface like the theming. The theming gave life to that uh, main screen. When you're talking with your boys and you just got some light music in the background with that theme, the Persona theme I had at all times with the nice beneath the mask in the back, now I just have... <laughs> just have the, the ethereal sounding PlayStation sound in the back. Uh, but this portal, honestly, man, there's people that are going to be like, oh, finally, my girl can watch her shows while I can play games with my wired headset, you know? Or, oh, finally, I can spend these $400 on this very specific piece of equipment. Yeah, like what you said, it's very situational. Lord, like, Too your, situational. Your kids are watching TV, you pull us up, you can play in your PS5, essentially. But you could also Five do... Five minutes tops. <laughs> but you could because also do this. Kids are gonna get bored. You could also do this with your your freaking phone, which is like another thing. Like that's what I've been doing. I use my iPad or I use my phone just to connect to my PS Five. Buy a Kishi, y'all. It, it, it is what it is, man. Um, just, just buy a Kishi Razor. That's what I have. You I mean, I do. I do. Into your phone. I, I do. I do want to mention that you can't play this outside your house, which is nice. I, I, I was, the way they worded it in the blog and marketing, I was like, you can't play this outside your home. It's useless. You yeah, know, that's it's not a console. It's an accessory. Yeah, it's so like, what's really the point of it? What a waste of development, recent development, right? But it turns out you can play it outside your home, but obviously it's not the ideal experience because you're just streaming, you know. But um, or you're remote playing, whatever. But regardless, uh, yeah, this is a no for me. I wish they use all that time and resources to 
actually do something better with it but absolutely i am interested however in seeing the people that truly benefit from it to talk about it i want to see them talk about it i want to see how it's helped them i want to see how people have gotten married because now they tolerate each other more because now their their <laughs> person can watch tv while they can game um i can't wait to see the miracle that this is going to do for a lot of people hopefully um maybe yeah. not maybe but, make um, some babies trace some names maybe ba make babies you're on, you're on the port you enter the portal you know Oh. I can't wait. Can't wait. We'll see. Um, yeah, so that is what it is. That's place in the portal, man. That's a no from me. We're not excited about it, as you can tell. No. It's an interesting concept, but I, I honestly, I, I hope that the rumor would just be a rumor. But um, If you would have said, oh, this is a three, three uh, let's say a $300 uh, portable console. It's got an OLED screen. It's called the PlayStation Portal, portable, whatever. You can... Uh, I don't know, they, and, and this is how they announced their their own version of Game Pass, like where not you know I know they have the subscription, but like you can actually play games on the go, like you can do with Game Pass, and then you you can you know the, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, this it's is too it, situational. The handheld market feels like it's it's too, it, it's it feels like it's trying to put its hand into so many pots at this point. Yeah. Right. Whether you want to fit in your pocket, whether you want to play AAA games on the go whether you want to bring your yep. console with you. Like, I feel like we're getting so many answers that no one really knows what they want because everything is so situational that I think plays are just trying to answer one of those questions here. But I don't think it's really going to hit because people that want to play console games are going to play them on a console on their TV. And then you wonder, and then we wonder why does Nintendo not have a new console yet? It's because they found the perfect balance way before the other two companies did way yeah. before valve did and even then not the every game is, that they make is like perfect for port for portability and and the thing is is that you can you can talk software all day and how like completely like old it is and how unoptimized it is still pokemon scarlet and violet are some of the fastest selling games that they've ever made uh the switch continues to reign as the ultimate balanced console arguably objectively could be considered the best console out there because of its portability and its home like friendliness like you can dock it so yeah yeah i mean i still think this thing's gonna sell just for the fact that yeah it's gonna be it's gonna give people that reason that again your spouse or your kids are watching tv you want to play your ps5 you can't do that so you just pick up and play you could be you know it's not even the fact you don't have to be in the same room you could literally just be like at work and do the exact same thing which is nice, but again, over Wi-Fi stuff like that, you're not gonna be playing this at work unless your work has some really damn good Wi-Fi. But yeah, unless you got that fiber, uh, what is it, fiber? Yeah, optic fiber. Yeah, like if I was in Puerto Rico and I took this thing with me, you even a hotel Wi-Fi, you think it would have worked? Bro, you can you can be in the best the best internet there is probably the best here for like someone that lives in like a lower like middle class like area. <laughs> Yeah, like, so it's not it, happening. It ain't working. It's not happening. It's not even worth it at that point. Um, nah. Yeah, that's what you in Portal. So let's blast through these last two topics. I wanted to get your opinion on... Um, uh, I mean, this is more for Soul. Because of the fact mm -hmm. that Bioware let go of 50 people. One of them included the Dragon Age writer, Mary Kirby. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, I think she's been there for quite a while, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but regardless, they let go of 50 people, and it was all to, quote-unquote, preserve the health of the studio, stuff like that. Um, and then this is all right before we even see, like, beta footage of the new Dragon Age game. We don't know anything about Mass Effect or in that one trailer. Is Bioware in trouble? Well, in trouble. I see what you mean with Jay, because Jay also being, like, massive into ah, Mass Effect and Dragon Age, just like <laughs> Bioware in general. Um, they said 50 do these 50 people are these 50 writers it's just 50 people one of them ended up being the lead writer at the studio okay I mean so it could be programmers it, could be QA testers it could be managers we don't know all we know is that at least one of them is one of the lead writers that's been with the studio for a long time was one of the there's ones. been a pattern with with layoffs and and or repositioning of people that has a chain effect because sometimes you'll either have layoffs and then you'll have decisions 
and or you'll have decisions and then you'll see layoffs reminds me of like the quantic dream thing where like the the head writers were like nah like we're starting from scratch these two are gone and we're gonna start from scratch i wonder if it's just that the the it's just like a, a re reimagine of the studio to better suit the needs for the next mass effect than dragon age um or similar to another uh company that we'll talk about uh, a writer that left that company um it could just mean that they need new vision because these jobs i mean mind you with video games you need innovation it comes to a point where certain companies they just don't have it in them anymore to innovate with what they got so they just kind of have to like look elsewhere i'd argue that there's companies that are very good at not having to lay off too many people and continue their uh vision such as like a naughty dog where you have people that have been around since the first uncharted and they can keep going and going and keep producing incredible content i wonder if this just means that if in trouble i here's the thing i have full for me because for me it's like oh maybe this will mean that the next mass effect and dragon age are actually going to be worthy sequels to their uh predecessors whereas if they hadn't unfortunately uh changed staff it was not going the direction that they wanted to i don't know i don't know if they're in trouble because bioware they already came out from uh, a lot of trouble once with anthem yeah and that just kind of got scrapped and they kept life goes on yeah i mean the conversation is that anthem was sort of the start of the downfall they haven't really recovered since then so they've been like on a, i don't know man people want to we want to have them at, at like the, they're they're on the up and up they're going up this hill and as hop is a success but this the hill's very it's very steep but yeah every, look, but every time cyberpunk yeah but i mean but, but like something like this where like you're letting go like senior stuff like that i think it really speaks more to the fact that um they want new blood for less money so the people Could it that, be that they're promoting from the inside i mean you would hope so right but like the fact that they let go of like a senior writer that has like a lot of like really um that has a, a lot of history in their background mm -hmm. and a lot of experience in their backgrounds and instead of just keeping them and as a managerial sort of so to speak <clears throat> and you know instead of the, you know paying them more because they've been with the company for so long they just let them go um, it's, it's, right. it's something that companies do. It's something that Disney does, right? Um, yeah. So it's, I feel like this is one of those instances. But, I, you know, I could be wrong man, in the in the loop here, but it feels like that when, like, do you have big games that are pillars of your studio like Dragon Age and like Mass Effect on the way, why would you not want to have someone that's experienced with the studio be there? Right, right, right. Unless those people were part of, like you said, like the downfall. Right, or... yeah. Or they influence the time that they want to erase. Yeah, you know. Cause for all, yeah, for all we know, there could argue, be bitter managers. You know, so. Yeah, because some people may argue it didn't start Anthem, started with Andromeda. Oh yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah, that works. You yeah. know, because uh, with Anthem, it was overly ambitious and poor executive uh, leadership. Andromeda was just poor writing. Yeah. Okay. There you go. So, I don't know. I, I know that I haven't played the trilogy like you guys have, um, but I am very sure that they they know what they have. I am very sure that they know the impact that they've had in storytelling. They uh, some may consider Bioware the the absolute best in uh, freedom of narrative and being able to kind of like your your choices shape your the uh, tailor the game. Oh, pioneers! Um, yeah, they're absolutely pioneers. Yeah, they're pioneers for sure. Um, they paved the way for games like Baldur's Gate and Divinity and Witcher. So I think that, you know, I wouldn't put it past them if they're looking at Baldur's Gate and they're like, oh, we got to we gotta amp it up right now. <laughs> yeah, no, you make a good point. Make a good point. Um, take it up a notch. But that leads into our final topic, right? And that's Michael Unsworth, who's the VP of Riot Rockstar Games, appears to have left the studio. It's not confirmed, but like from what people were diving into with his LinkedIn account that uh he left the company so right. and this is the man that's been shepherding the past generation more of grand theft auto or of uh, rockstar games that we all hold to a pedestal as like some of the best games of all time so grand theft auto 4 red dead redemption 1 gta 5 red dead redemption 2 la noir like all this stuff 
he has in his resume, <laughs> which is insane. Like, what a freaking web resume, right? You like just on those games alone, Walt, over a hundred million units. Yeah, just between like billion, three games at least, and billions of dollars. Billions of dollars, yeah. Like, so and and, and then I'm playing through Red Dead Redemption too, right? So it's a little, it's it's a little bit of a, a, a little poetic here that this this news appears as I'm playing Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption two, and really just enveloping and like the dialogue and the way characters say certain things and the way it's said. Um, that's the same thing. Uh, but like overall, just the writing quality is is bar none, you know. Mm-hmm. So this makes but the fact that this happens right, I wanted to bring this up because this makes me think that GTA Six is very close. Because uh, they don't need him anymore. Right, right. His job is done. Mm. They they finish what they need to finish with the writing and the story or whatever they're doing. So this makes me think that he is definitely going to credit on GTA 6, but he's gone and done with Rockstar, so that means that possibly GTA 6 is closer than we think. What do you think about that? Um, we're definitely closer than we were before, for sure. It's happening. It is happening. Yeah. Um, it is a matter of when. It is a matter of uh, if they're like on the finishing touches. to. Because I, it, Rockstar, Rockstar has never been a, a company to announce a game and that game being years and years and years. Because uh, when they announced Red Dead Redemption 2, I think it took like what, like not even two years for it to come out? Yeah, I think it got announced in what, 27? No, it got announced 2016, I think. It was a summer. Yeah, because the very first trailer was just the gang riding through um, some barren wastelands. I think that was 2016, and then they got the delay to 2018, maybe 2017 or something like that. So it took it took around like maybe like a year or two. To yeah, well, because like because that game was being planned to I think it was I think it was supposed to come out 2017, and they got delayed to 2018. Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if if because uh, Rockstar is very uh, unconventional when it comes to announcing games. Because when they announced Red Dead Redemption 2. It was with a wallpaper of a sunset, and then there was horses, yeah. uh, and then they kept like showing more and more of the picture, and people were like, "What the fuck?" And we we're like, "Wait, cowboys, western, Red Dead Redemption," um, and then boom, they they showed the non-story trailer where it was just like the world and the rivers and the mountains and the animals, um, and people riding through the 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 wasteland, um, but now. In my mind, I was like, I want maybe for game game awards, we get a, a war, world premiere of GTA Six. That would be um, awesome. <laughs> that would break the internet. When I because t- here's the thing, we forget, right? We forget, like yeah, Tears of the Kingdom, great. We we forget, like all these games, we forget that GTA Five has been around for so long. We forget what GTA is. Yeah. <laughs> like GTA, GTA is a is a global phenomenon. Like it is one of the most influential games and one of the most recognized games in in ever. Ever. Yeah. Like whenever a GTA would when GTA Five dropped, bro, holy hell, be, be, people were going insane for it. No, yeah, the, the, I know. I was I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but yeah, I can see the appeal any, anyway. It was such a no, like it was such a the, uh, the three, uh, cr- uh, pop culture breaker. Absolutely, man. Um. So yeah, no, I uh. If anything, yeah, no, it's close. It, it is close for sure. It's closer than we think, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what it looks like. It's just, it's kind of sucked that this writer that, uh, that, um, what was it? Uh, un, I'm trying to remember his name. Michael Unsworth. That's what his last mm-hmm. name was. Um, it sucks that he's not going to be part of Red Dead Redemption 3, which, right. That the game has to happen. Like, that sequel made so much money. And I think it just announced it's still like over 50 million units. So we had to get a Red Dead Redemption 3. But uh, it sucks that he's not going to be part of it. So, but we'll see. We'll see. For him to leave, or supposedly leave, you have to assume that, again, they have like a nice team there anyway, so that he feels confident that they're going to be okay. So. Absolutely. But yeah. Absolutely. He left excited. them in good hands, hopefully. We're excited, man. But yeah, uh, so that's W for the podcast, man. Um, Man, I'm ready to get out of here. I want to play my ball skate. 
Um, <laughs> so, hey, yo. <laughs> any case, dude, that was episode 108 of the Dual Shock and Sense podcast. Walt, we got going on for the next couple weeks, buddy. Well, once I pull the plug on BG3, it'll be that. Uh, this week, I'm going to see, I uh, watch another movie. Um, uh, and theaters, of course. I'm going to see what's playing. I'm going to see what's our next movie watch along. Going to continue Last of Us with my girl. Uh, big thing this Friday is Halloween Horror Nights uh, commences this week. So I'll be nice. going to that this week. Um, got that Last of Us house in there. Oh, man, I can't wait. <laughs> Can nice. I Gonna shit my pants. <laughs> That's Wait. gonna be so. Let me know how it is. I'm actually really. I wanted to go, but can't do it now. But let yeah, me know how it is. You, I'm excited. I'll let you know. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know how uh, uh, one to ten how much I. Uh, I... Um, <laughs> but yeah, man. I'm excited, man. Uh, see if I can get more into to just a new game like BG3. That'll be my new game to kind of like get my mind again into gaming. Uh, but movies are gonna keep coming. Shows are gonna keep coming. Um, Don't say it. Get back on that manga, because uh, those chapters be hitting. How about you, man? <laughs> yeah. What, what uh, did you say? That, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Nothing, nothing. Um, in All any right. case, I'm excited, yeah, for the next couple of weeks. It's going to be more Bald Skate 3, and then we'll come back on the, another podcast. Hopefully, we'll still hear, and uh, we'll talk more about that game and our experience with it, because I just, I just want to dive in, man. It's so good. Uh, enjoy my time with that one more Red Dead Redemption 2 as well and uh I, actually I get my my loverless fights arcade fight stick in the in the mail this week so Ooh. I'm excited to get back to finally get back into Street Fighter 6 the way I wanted to so I, I can play as Marissa and Kimberly online and learn some new characters I actually want to learn DJ as well so the fact that I'm going to have this new fight stick in hand is going to really motivate me to uh really learn the characters and play more competitively so that's gonna be really fun and then i get to use the same fight stick for mortal kombat 1 Tekken 8 like yeah I'm, I'm down for that i'm really excited for that this week and uh i think that's really it um i'm trying to remember uh oh yeah i mean september i mean no well september is a uh, batman i think september 17th is a uh, batman day so Ooh. So that I'm waiting for that day specifically for all the comics to go on sale. So I get the rest of the White Knight series. So nice. if you have Comicsology or, or whatever, anyone out there, yeah, look into Batman Day and then check out the White Knight uh, comic book series. You won't be disappointed. we Will do. Yeah, very good stuff there. But other than that, man, that's it for me. So I think we can just get on out of here. Um, again, thank you guys for watching the Dual Shock Sense episode 108 uh we'll be back with the next one remember hit that like button and subscribe to the podcast and to the channel uh we'll be back with more with our thoughts on Baldur's Gate 3 anything else that happens i'm not sure we're doing like a special like topic that day i know so i want to do something like a different special topic but regardless we're going to be talking about Baldur's Gate 3 and anything else that comes up so i'll see you guys later all right good one <laughs>